Hey Techno Studs, in this video we're going to cover number systems. Now binary is a number system and it operates just the same as other number systems that you're used to working with on a day to day basis. Now because some of us have not dealt with binary numbers before, it can get a little confusing. But as long as you keep in mind it operates off of the same parameters of the systems you're already used to, then it can be a lot easier to understand how binary works. So we're going to correlate how binary works to different number systems. In this video, we'll start out by talking about some of the different systems that are out there that you probably are a little familiar with. We're gonna go and take a look at Roman numerals, although you don't really need to know too much about Roman numerals, really. It is a fascinating topic, and the idea and concepts around Roman numeral is quite a bit different than any other numbering system that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm just gonna give you a few facts, a few, just an interesting look into Roman numerals. Then we're gonna move on to the decimal system. Now the decimal system is probably the one that you're most familiar with, and we're going to use a lot in correlating between binary and the decimal system. Then we'll get into time, which is operates on its own little parameters there. So let's talk about time. And then finally, we'll get into binary and just take a glance at binary. So here are just a few examples of the number systems. We're gonna see later on, there, there's actually a lot of different number systems. Decimal is probably the one that you're used to working with the most. You probably use it on a daily or weekly basis where you have to calculate something or you add something up. And so you use this often. That's why we're going to really correlate strongly with uh, between binary and decimal. Binary is the topic at hand, the main topic that we want to get to the bottom of. So we will be talking about that. Hexadecimal is yet another system that is quite a bit and looks quite a bit different. And we're gonna have a whole module on that as well. And Roman numeral is an example as well, which really operates quite a bit different than these other three examples here. Now, if you were to go and do a search for number systems or numeral systems on the web, this wiki article would be one that would pop up here. This is a list of numeral systems. And as I scroll through here, there's Roman numerals right there. You can see that there's a lot of different types of systems that are out there. A lot of ones that we probably haven't encountered with before. And then uh, we're gonna get more into some of these base ones like the binary, we're gonna get into the uh, decimal system. Um, you can see they go by multiple names and they're defined a little differently in here. There's hexadecimal. But as you can see, there is a long list of different options in here. So um, let's go more in depth into some of these and, uh, and see what they look like. Here we have the Roman numeral system, which is quite a bit different than the day-to-day -day math that we're used to. Many of you have probably encountered Roman numerals in the past and might even know how it works. With the I is for one, a V is five, an X is 10, and you add up these numbers in sequence. So a V five plus I one equals six. Unless the I becomes before, if the lower number comes before a higher number, then it's subtraction. So this actually equals four. So it's a real fascinating system. And another thing too is, is that notice that there is no representation for zero in the Roman numerals. So this is just one example of an, a, a system that we don't use on a regular basis, but many of us probably have some familiarity or at least have seen it out there. Then we have the decimal system. This is the one that you're probably most familiar with and use on a day-to-day -day basis. We also call it the base 10 system. That's because there's 10 digits, zero through nine. So that's an important uh, denoting that difference. You know, zero is a placeholder in the uh, decimal system. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gives us 10 digits right there. 
So we have 10 digits, but it starts at zero. That's gonna be important when we get into binary numbers because uh, we're going to be have to calculate some things and we're gonna to have to understand that zero is our first digit. All right, so we've got zero through nine here. And when we add things up, it's kind of like, you know, you're adding one every time, right? When you're, when you are uh, counting up, you're adding a single digit every time. So zero plus one is one, plus one is two, plus one is three, four, five, six, seven, you get the point. We go all the way to nine. What's interesting here is what happens when we get to nine is this actually gets reset and we carry a one. So a lot of us learned this back in elementary school and maybe we've forgotten it or maybe we just need a refresher or maybe it's that uh, you were never exposed to it. But what I want you to do is start thinking about every single one of those positions there is has a certain value attached to it. We've got these columns. We've got the ones column. We've got the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. Now, every time we do this, we multiply by 10 to get the next one, right? So we've got one times 10 equals 10, times 10 equals 100, times 10 equals 1,000, times 10 equals 10,000, and so on and so forth. And so that's where we get this base 10 from right there. Every, every single column is going to go up by 10 times. And then we can write a number in here, 148. So we got one 100, we got four tens, and we got eight ones. And some of us back in elementary school can maybe recall that uh, when we were learning this, there was a just a single little cube, a small little cube for that ones. And we would have a certain amount of cubes that we would add up uh, that we'd have in that column. And then in the tens, we had a line. There was 10 of those little cubes, but they were in a line all stuck together. And then we'd have all of those in there. And in this example right here, we'd have four of those. In the hundreds, we we would have a square of, uh, it, it would go across by 10 and down by 10 and all those little squares. And we just have a block of that in this example right here, it would just be one block. And then if we had something in the thousands, that was like an actual cube that we would have that would have a thousand of those little blocks in it. So I don't know if you remember that, but we can think of it for along that lines. Another way that we can think about this that I would like you to think about th this is that in here, we would have a thousand times zero, right? There's, there's no number here. So it's a thousand times zero, so that, that equals zero. Uh, in this, we'd have one times 100, so that would equal 100 right there. And this right here, we have four times 10, so we would have 40 right here. And then this column right here, we would have uh, eight times one. And so we would have an eight. And then what we could do is we could add these together and that would come up for a total of 148. I'm gonna bring up one other way that we can look at this. And I don't want you to get too confused with this. If you don't understand it, we'll just move on from it. But I'm going to relate it also to binary. So I'm gonna put it out there uh, in case this resonates with some, some people. Uh, but in this example right here, we could also say that this is eight times 10 to the zeroth place. And then we could say, and uh, 10 to the zero, actually, if you were to calculate that out, that is the equivalent of one right there. And then we have uh, four times 10 to the one. So essentially that's four times 10. And then we have uh, one times 10 to the second. So that's essentially, that's one times 100. And then here we have uh, uh, zero times 10 to the third. So that continues to count up. The, the point that I'm going with is uh, you don't need to necessarily know all the mathematics between the, uh, 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 of all of this, but this is the base 10. So this is where that base 10 comes in. We've got 10 to the zero, one, two, three. So each column that counts up. And then if you were to calculate this all out, it would all add up to 148 and it works out magnificently. So there is one other way that I also want you to look at this, and that is, is that when we're counting, when we're counting, we start out with zero, we add one, and then another one, and then another one, and we can continue on until we hit nine, and something interesting happens once we hit nine. When we go to the next one, 
we reset the ones column and then we carry the one over into the next column. And now we've got 10. We've got one 10 there. And then we can do the same thing over again once we hit nine and then we go to the next number. That column resets and we carry a one over into the next column, making that two. And then we do it all over again, go all the way up to nine. Once we hit 10, this column resets, we carry a one and that becomes three. So on so forth until we get to 99 and then it carries over into the 100 and then we get to 999 and then it carries over into the 1000. So uh, you can see where I'm going with this is that it's kind of, think of it like an odometer that's clicking up with each one of these columns uh, and, and increasing with each one of these columns. Now let's correlate that to time. Time is pretty unique as well, because what happens is we start out at zero seconds and then there's one second and then there's two seconds. And we count all the way up to 59 seconds. And then what happens is this gets reset and we carry a one over into the minute. And then we count up again all the way to 59. And then the next one, we reset that column and carry a one over into the next column. And now we've got two minutes. We can do that all the way up to 59 minutes and 59 seconds when we add one more second to this. This resets, carries the one over, this gets reset, we carry another one over, and now we're in the hour. <laughs> what does hour do? It counts up to 23, and then once we get to 24, then we get an extra day in there. So it's unique in the way that, uh, you know, there's a different base system for each one of these, um, uh, for each one of the second, minute, hour, and day. So that brings us to binary, which is the main topic for the rest of this module. And I want you to think about it in those same concepts. Once we understand that same concept, then uh, it becomes a lot simpler. It's just really strange to initially think about because we just got two numbers. We've got a zero and a one, and that's all we have to work with. But it works the same exact way of the systems we're already used to. So what do we do? We have a zero, and then it goes up to one. And then we add another one, but we don't have two. Two is not represented. So we got to reset this and then we carry a one into the next. And so what do we have? We got zero, one, and then we have 10, which is really odd concept here, but, but that's the way it works. And then we had another one and now we have 11. And then we add another one. This column resets, we carry the one, we can't have two here, so that column resets, and then we carry the one right there. And then we add another one, so now that's one, and this would be one, zero, one. We add another one, and now this resets, and we carry a one. And, uh, and then we add another one, so we end up one, one, one. So that's how binary works. I'm gonna have a whole video that's gonna talk more in depth about binary and how binary works but that's essentially how binary works and how binary counts. So here again, I can fill in some numbers here, one, one, zero, one, and I can start figuring out what does this equate to? Well, similar to how we expressed it in the base 10, it's going to work the same way, right? What we have here is we have one eight, we have one four, we have zero twos and one ones. If you were to add all that together, eight plus four plus one, you would get 13. So that's the answer there. I'm gonna have a whole video on it. So you don't need to memorize this right now or go over this right now. Um, I just want you to understand the concept that we have with binary numbers is exactly the same with the decimal system that you're so used to working with. I have a whole module that I'm gonna go over hexadecimal numbers and really dive deep into it. But I just wanted to point out that hexadecimal works in the same way. It's base 16, so it looks a little different and it can be a little confusing at first, but it's really the same thing. What do we have? We have a ones column. 
What do we have? We have a 16s column. What do we have? A 256, a 4096, a 65,536. We can have our different numbers that are in here and we'll talk much more about that when we get into that module. But if you want to figure out what the answer are to these, you do it the same process. Four times 4,096 plus five times 256 plus seven times 16 plus one times one, and then that would come out with the answer. Or if you're, uh, that relates best to you thinking of it that way. You can think of it that last uh, example that I have on here as well. So there's hexadecimal. We'll get much more into it in the future, but I just wanted to expose you to that. Now, I know there are some students out there where some of this is really foreign concepts and it might be harder to grasp. Some of you may have picked this up very quickly because you're really good with numbers. It doesn't matter. Either way, we're going to get you to really understanding this. So if you're not as strong with numbers and math, not, not a problem. We're going to take a look at this from every single angle and get you up to speed and make sure that you're enjoying this process. Because like I say, it's a fun little game that we're gonna be able to do once we understand these binary numbers. But we really have to get really familiar and really comfortable with working with these binary numbers.